Tonight on Q2, escalating quickly. I was really scared that she was going to come over again because she did have a gun. A neighborhood dispute turns violent as shots ring out. We'll take you inside the incident and the larger problem it represents. Plus evictions on the rise. Keep in mind that the number of individuals experiencing housing insecurity is probably much, much higher um, than we're actually seeing. More and more people are being kicked out of their rental properties. We dive into the reasons why and dishing up fish favorites. The community has, has stepped up so much for me that it, it's incredible. Um, I didn't, I did not expect that. After a year of challenges and health issues, Crazy Mary is back in business. And we're ready. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Lutz. A neighborhood argument where shots are fired in the Billings South Side is providing a glimpse into a much larger issue in our city. We're talking about gun violence and the knee-jerk reaction to pull out a firearm to solve a dispute. Billings Police's weapons offenses doubled in the span of just seven years. And as our Charlie Kleps tells us, this is just the latest example. It was in this Billings neighborhood when an argument turned violent on Sunday. Multiple shots were fired. No one was injured, but many were rattled. It's public road! It's public road! James Kelly never figured his Sunday afternoon would turn into terror. This is something no one should ever have to go through. Kelly and two friends say they were working on a car in front of a neighbor's house when the argument first broke out. I parked over right here in front of this camper because his whole block was already covered with cars and she shows up like a bat out of hell and started yelling at us. That yelling continued from both sides, but eventually the altercation became physical. She went back over to her house, got up on the porch, said something else, came back down, grabbed decorative wood out of her yard and just started beating her dad's car up with it. Dad, you're gonna pay for all of it. This shocking video shows the massive destruction caused to the vehicle, an alarming sight that then became even scarier. We heard gunshots in the backyard, so I had my friend James call the cops. Being shot at or being near shots fired is a very scary experience. According to the group of friends, the suspect shot multiple times in different directions near the area of Ponderosa School. BPD say they arrested 43-year-old Jessica Schneider on two felony counts of criminal endangerment. She was still listed on the jail roster as of Monday afternoon. I never thought I would have had gone through that but Billings is getting dangerous day by day. It's the latest example of an alarming rise in weapons offenses over the last two years, according to BPD's 2022 annual report. All of the people involved in this instance were unharmed, but all fear what their city has turned into. I think the scariest part for me was after the officer showed up with all their guns, I thought she was going to start shooting at them. Because I was like, is this really what it comes down to? Billings is supposed to be a well welcoming community and I because of that one incident I don't feel that in Billings Charlie Kleps MTN News fresh statistics from the Billings Police Department show reports of shootings reflect a new normal of heightened crime post pandemic year to date numbers show 35 shootings called into the police department compared to 38 this time in 2021 and 32 in 2020 and in 2019 there were 24 shootings but what stands out from the recent wave of violent crime is the trend of teen involvement while police don't have exact numbers on the involvement of those under the age of 18. Recent shootings with teen suspects stand out as unusual. New information tonight on the murders of four people in Idaho, this time in Kellogg, Idaho. It's just 100 miles west of Missoula along Interstate 90. Idaho State Police say dispatchers received a 911 call just before 7.30 Sunday, saying several people had been killed inside a home. When police arrived to that home, they found the bodies of four people a 31-year-old man believed to be connected to the deaths was taken into custody. Idaho State Police say there's no threat to the community and they're not releasing any information at this time, including the identities of those people involved. And two people were killed at a popular 
uh, Amphitheater. We're talking about the Gorge in Washington State over the weekend. It happened at the campgrounds near the Electronic Dance Music Festival on Saturday night. The shooter was among the three injured. He was taken into custody after authorities say they fired randomly into the crowd at the Overflow campsite. The EDM Festival canceled all of Sunday's shows. Around the country, eviction rates are at an all-time high, and in Montana, renters are not immune. Pandemic-era aid is running out, and housing prices are climbing. These factors are more than ever pushing those eviction rates to a level that we haven't seen in years. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes a closer look. Just walk it back up in here. On June 5th, Shelly Cooper had to leave her home of 14 years in the Cherry Creek Mobile Home Park under a 72-hour eviction notice. Well, I lost my dad to COVID on um, New Year's Eve a year ago and uh, got behind two months. Cooper got behind on two months rent. One of the criteria under Montana law that can be met with a three day eviction notice and court summons. The inability to pay rent is driving evictions around the country. The number of individuals experiencing housing insecurity is probably much, much higher. Um, than we're actually seeing. Getting a real picture of evictions in Montana is difficult, says eviction lab researcher Adam Chapnick, due to a lack of data and what Chapnick calls hidden evictions. Probably also a lot of the evictions are happening outside of the court um, because it's just easier. But some Montana landlords like Stephen Galloway of Great Falls say eviction isn't taken lightly from their end. I love my tenants. I get a bad one once in a while. We all do. And sometimes it's not even their fault. So sad I still have to evict you because you either got to pay your rent or you don't. Cooper says navigating the court proceedings around her eviction was a difficult process. I showed up. They did not. They decided to continue it. They would send me a letter in the mail. I did not get the letter until after the fact. Checking in with her Monday, two weeks after her eviction, Cooper told me she has been bouncing between motels and looking at potential rentals, but her permanent housing option is gone. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a hard worker. I'm, I'm a disabled veteran, 100%. And I'm getting removed from my home. So. A national problem all too real for Montana renters. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. We've been watching the clouds increase. This is our Stockman Bank weather cam in Miles City. You see the clouds there, and if we switch over to radar, you can see where those showers are starting to develop some areas of thunderstorms around uh, Rosebud and Custer County. Also, some lightning to go along with that. Some fairly heavy rain could be involved with a lot of these storms. And also watching this streak outside of Great Falls up towards Haver, over towards the Malta area, where we're seeing a lot of thunder and lightning and the potential for some heavy rain. Let's take it through time and give you a hint of what's happening with the forecast will look for the best potential for some heavy rain and thunderstorms to the east of Billings, but these light shaded areas, they also indicate where we could see some mountain snow. We'll break down a lot of the forecast details coming up in a few minutes. Hysham's water issues may continue, but the call for help is now coming from Molson Coors, who's donated an entire pallet of water to the community. Take a look at this photo of this pretty massive donation. The town's water source is, of course, the Yellowstone River, but the water must be filtered and disinfected before it can be consumed because of harmful pathogens. As town leaders work to find a solution, donations of bottled water are flowing in from neighboring communities. A beloved Billings restaurant owner isn't letting anything stop her from dishing up that famous and delicious fish that she does. It's been a challenging year for her to say the least. She first lost her building and then reinvented her signature brand as a food truck, but then she suffered a heart attack. But as our Haley Monaco tells us, the community rallied behind Crazy Mary, allowing her to reopen this morning. Crazy Mary's Fish and Chips is back open for the first time in two months, and many people have been excited for this exact moment, not just for the food, but to support Mary herself, as a heart attack landed her in the ICU. And we're ready. Now I'm back. I'm ready to rock and roll. It was a day full of friendly faces. It's good to see you. Hi. And full bellies for Crazy Mary's long-anticipated reopening Monday. Now that's good. Did you miss it? Yes. 
and I couldn't wait for her to get back. Mary Frances Jackson has been out since April after collapsing at her house. And I called my daughter. I was on the floor. I said, baby girl, I think mom was having a heart attack. She was right. A heart attack doctors say was caused by stress. Just six months earlier, Jackson says she was forced out of her original restaurant across the street and had to rebrand as a food truck. After eight days in the hospital, Mary was ready to start fighting for her life back. I just said, that's it. I got to get up. I have so much to look forward to. And I was supposed to retire at 55, not die at 55. Turns out she can't retire quite yet either. While Mary was hospitalized, she says she had no idea that there was an entire community rallying for her. We were upset. We uh, donated to her uh, GoFundMe page when it started up. That GoFundMe raised over $20,000, keeping Mary afloat in a time she needed it most. Honestly, if it wasn't for the community, I, I, I would have had to hawk my house. Um, and uh, they saved me from that. Now it's, it's a little bit more of worrying about keeping the community happy with me. I want to return the favor. And while she may not be able to eat her deep fried delicacies anymore, everyone else is excited too. She stays healthy. So she, uh, she can keep, keep us filled up with her good food. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2, Juneteenth is being celebrated across the state and nation. Today we'll tell you the importance behind the day and how it came to be a federal holiday. And later, fish and the floods. As the Yellowstone River rushed well beyond its banks last year, we'll take a look at the impact it had on those living in the waterways.